welcome to Rudy's Retro Intel channel. Today we're going to work on a floppy drive that's not working. I have one that's working and one that's not. But today we're not going to be using any diagnostics tool other than the floppy disk uh, disk analyzer, chip puller, small uh, flat screwdriver, and a other screwdriver to pull the bigger uh, screws out. So let's first boot up this drive to make sure it's working, and then we can go ahead to the next one. Let's put the disc in. There we go. All right, let's just go through the menu and just do a quick Test, which is number five you can do radio alignment test disk speed test disk clamping test read write test or auto you'll pick the auto test to run through everything and we pick the slot which is in slot one slot six drive one and we wait While waiting for this to finish, I just want to remind viewers that when we're plugging in the floppy disk card in the Apple II, 2 Plus 2E, that it goes into slot 6. Slot 6 is your boot slot for the uh, these computers. Others might require different slots, but I believe um, the IBM PC might be the same. I can't remember correctly. All right, this drive passes. So alignment, the alignment test is good. Speed test is good. Disk clamping good. Rewrite test is good. So we will turn this off and start taking the disc apart. So this is our good, our good drive. Let's maybe angle the camera a bit so you can see. There we go. So we will pull apart the good drive. Basically four screws. They come up pretty quickly and easily. The nice thing about these two drives is that they're both Apple drives. So the mechanism and electronics inside should be identical. Alright. Once you have the four screws off. This unit just slides backwards. Put that aside. And then you can see it has the Apple sticker on the back. So you know it's a legitimate Apple to drive. Alright, so this is the good drive. Now let's take apart the defective drive. As we can see here, the drives are very similar. Uh, the layout is exactly the same, just the board color. And this one's a lighter green, this is a darker green. It's usually because of the manufacturing, where it's manufactured. This is 1978. And this is also 1978. Part 650-0103. Yeah, it was identical. So, I guess they had uh, different colored uh, boards printed up, maybe a slightly different manufacturer, I'm not sure. Anyways, all we need to know is that these are identical. So that means that the drive mechanism, mechanism, the boards, the logic boards, and the controller boards in the back are identical. The ones in the back, lower back, you can see that there. This one here actually drives the motor. 
And this one here drives all the reads and writes, etc. So, since you know this is the good board and this is the bad board, let's take the main logic boards out and swap them. These are just push back carefully and disconnect. Again, you have to be careful the orientation because these two have a, a red stripe on the bottom. Pin ones on this side here. If you put them in backwards, again, you'll end up frying at you. So let's take this connector off and this connector off. And we pull up these screws. There's just two little screws. Now that the boards are unscrewed, they just slide towards the front of the disk drive and they come out. So here's the board. This looks pretty good. There's no, looks like there's no repairs been done to this board. And there's no bad capacitors. All right, so this is the defective. This could be the defective, unit. let's see. So let's take the, the known good board, plug it into the other one. And we're just, we're not going to screw everything in. We're just going to put all the cables back. Again, if you're doing this for the first time, you should definitely take pictures and know where things plug in so that you don't have a dead drive afterwards. All right, let's plug this back into the 2E. This is the 2E floppy controller, which also works the 2 plus or 2. Again, the cable has a red line on it, these ones. Some have the colored rainbowed ones. Those are a bit more easier to confuse, but these ones are... I find them better because actually the red line is there, so you know it's pin one. Pin one is on this side of the card, and this goes in just like that. So you want to make sure it's not not backwards and not overhanging. So you don't want. Let me see if I can do this. I'm not sure if it comes up fine on the camera, but it's overlapped, so it's offset it's not right against so make sure it's right up against the back of the card and you push down pin one lined up great now we put this card back into slot six which is the boot slot the apple twos and we'll turn on a monitor and put the disc inside and boot it up Oh, signs of life. It actually read the disk. Let's perform a complete auto auto test. Number five. Slot six, drive one, number one. This is a diagnostic software provided by Verbatim. They um, created their own diagnostic tool, I guess, that they've been using for with with their drives and decided to give it up now there are versions which um, have more of an automated look and feel to it I'm not crazy about it I just want to get to the point and get going so we can see that the radio test alignment is good speed test is good disc clamping is good and the read write is good so we know that the the electronics portion of the board is having an issue it looks like the drive speed, the drive mechanism, 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 and the drive uh, 
driver board is good. So let's start swapping chips. Make sure you turn off your computer first. All right, so this is our good board. Uh, this is the good board. So let this, let's leave this here. And we're gonna start pulling out chips with either, if you have a flat screwdriver or chip puller, you can just pull one out and start swapping. So what we will do first is this one here. This is the, if it's coming up on the camera or not properly, but it's the MC3470N chip. These ones are known to go bad and the um, 74LS125. These are the ones when you plug the cable in wrong, this drive usually this, sorry, this chip usually pops and goes bad. Either it actually explodes or you will have uh, uh, maybe not visible damage, but this is the one chip you want to replace. Now this one here, um, the 3470N, is the chip that does the read and write, um, basic controls the read and write. It's a, uh, it's a one chip uh, kind of controller in a sense that it is the main piece that needs to be working for this unit. Let's try it. Let's see if I'm right. So this is the good one. And this is the other one. And we're going to pop it in. All right. So on, these, on the chips, there's a notch or a little bubble on the side, which shows you pin one and this chip was lined with pin one down here. There's also a little dot, which you probably can't see on the video, but a little dot showing where pin one is. These one is facing down, these ones are facing to the left. Anyways, so we pop the new chip, the other chip in. Let's see if this boots up. And we get the Apple screen and that's about it. So we know that this drive now is behaving just like the other one. Therefore, I believe that if this chip is replaced, then we will have a working drive. So, what have we done? Well, we fixed, we've diagnosed a Apple II drive with using just another drive, a working drive, which we validated and tested. We've used a screwdriver, use a flat pin, a flat uh, a screwdriver tip. Or a chip puller, I use the chip puller. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools to use. And we found out that this is a bad chip. This is the culprit. So I have to go and purchase some as I do not have any of these in stock. Now, the next thing would be to swap everything back and close it up. But I'm sure you don't want to see that. It's pretty boring. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming.